getting to know the heart. This video is just to recap all of those particular points specifically about the heart that you should know and therefore highlight any that you think you need to go back and revise a little bit better. So just to add in that extra detail so you're fully comfortable with the heart and then the circulatory system in total. The heart is a hollow, four-chambered organ. An organ is a structure that's composed of different tissue types and they all work together to carry out a particular function. The top two chambers are the atria. We have the left atrium, the right atrium. The larger two bottom chambers are the ventricles, the left ventricle and the right ventricle. The septum is the wall that separates the left and the right side of the heart. The heart is located in the thorax or chest cavity. It's approximately the size of your fist. It's protected by a double membrane called the pericardium. The pericardium consists of two layers and in between each of these layers a liquid or a fluid is secreted. This allows for the friction-free movement of the heart. The pericardium is there for protection. It protects the heart against overexpansion. It's very important that you can label the blood vessels leading into and out of the heart. Let's begin with the arteries. Remember, arteries carry blood out or away from the heart. So the aorta and the pulmonary artery are the two arteries that lead out of the heart. Veins carry blood into or towards the heart. The vena cava and the pulmonary veins, they are the veins that lead into the heart. The heart has a number of valves. Valves ensure the blood flows in one direction only, so valves prevent the backflow of blood. The chordae tendineae, these are the heartstrings and they anchor the valves and they are attached to the papillary muscles, a label that's often forgotten by students and can come up on the exam. The middle layer of the heart is composed of cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle is only found in the heart. It is fatigue resistant or slow to tire. Cardiac muscle cells contract without nervous stimulation. This is referred to as being myogenic. The heart is the pump of the circulatory system. It contracts approximately 72 times a minute in the average adult. The cardiac muscle cells are therefore very active and so require a good supply of oxygen and nutrients. The reason why they need the oxygen and the nutrients is for aerobic respiration. So in these cardiac muscle cells there must be many mitochondria because a lot of ATP is required to fuel all of this contraction. The cells of the heart receive a constant supply of blood. The blood is rich in oxygen and nutrients. The coronary arteries, they supply the heart muscles, so that middle layer of the heart that's made up of the cardiac muscle cells. The left and right coronary arteries originate at the base of the aorta, so they branch directly off the aorta, just above the semilunar valves. The left coronary artery branches, and this forms the left anterior descending artery, commonly known as the LAD, and the circumflex artery. So in cardiology there are three main coronary arteries. There's the right coronary artery and then the left coronary artery but this branches into the circumflex artery and the left anterior descending artery, the LAD. You don't need to know the names of these, it's just interesting to know and it's generally these arteries that get blocked if somebody has a heart attack. The coronary veins run parallel to the coronary arteries. They collect the deoxygenated blood and the waste. Most of the coronary veins will filter into one main venous structure. It's called the coronary sinus and this eventually drains into the right atrium. But there are many of the smaller coronary veins that drain directly into the right atrium. Double circulation. The heart acts as two pumps in one, simultaneously so at the same time pumping oxygenated and deoxygenated blood around the body. The benefit of double circulation is that it's much more efficient to separate the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Double circulation is made up of two circuits, the first of which is the systemic circuit. It's dealt with by the left side of the heart, so blood is going to be pumped from the left side of the heart to the body and back to the heart again. So a very great distance. You can see it in the diagram here. The reason why there is a very thick left ventricle wall is because that ventricle has to contract forcibly to push the blood this very great distance. The other circuit is the pulmonary circuit. It's dealt with by the right side of the heart. So blood from the right side of the heart is going to be pumped from the right ventricle to the lungs and back to the heart again. So a very short distance, much less than the systemic. So less force is required because the blood doesn't have to be pushed that greater distance. That's the reason why the right ventricle wall is not as thick as the left. 
the heartbeat or the cardiac cycle. This is the rhythmic contraction of the heart and it's controlled by the SA node. The SA node is the sinoatrial node and it's referred to as the pacemaker. It's a group of specialised cells located in the upper right atrial wall. The SA node generates an electrical impulse that passes over the walls of the atria. This causes the atria to contract. This is known as atrial systole. The electrical impulse is also passed to another specialised group of cells, the AV node, the atrioventricular node, located in the septum at the base of the right atrium, or in medical books, the interatrial septum. After a momentary delay, the impulse is then relayed down through the septum and passed to the walls of the ventricles, causing them to contract. This is known as ventricular systole. The cardiac cycle is made up of stages when there's contraction, systole, and then phases or stages when there is no contraction, diastole. Finally, the heartbeat sound, the lub-dub sound of the heart, this is caused by valves closing. The lub sound is the bicuspid and tricuspid valves closing. The dub sound is the semilunar valves closing. So hopefully this video has helped you in some way with your revision of the heart of the circulatory system, even if it's just to highlight what you need to go back and learn. Please go back and learn the chapter on blood. Students often think they know it and they don't really know it in the detail that's required. Another aspect which I often encounter is the LS section of the vein and the diagrams of the blood vessels in general. Please go back and practice them using your textbooks. Ensure that you can define blood pressure and pulse. It hasn't been asked in a while. You never know. It could have here in June and be able to write a note on the effects of exercise and diet on the circulatory system. Link all of this with the lymphatic system because you never know, you might get a question where the two topics, the circulatory system and the lymphatic system are tied together. So remember, this is an optional study resource. You have your textbooks, you have notes, I'm sure, from your teachers. There are other videos out there and as well as that, you've those past papers. The very best of luck.